So, you edit a sequence of shots, perhaps for your short film, and suddenly something doesn't add up. It's not the composition, nor the lighting, or the camera work, those are all fine. It's something in the way it's put together that just doesn't click. Well, in that case, you might want to check out the six common mistakes when editing your 3D shots together. They might just be the cause of your troubles. These tips are an addendum to my Master Cinematic Storytelling course, which we recently released at CG Boost. And really, I couldn't be happier about the student results, seeing how they improve their skill and apply all the material from the course. So, if you too want to learn about art fundamentals, creating cinematic shots and stringing them together into sequences and even short films, give the course a go. One of the most common mistakes when composing shots into sequences is you make a cut, but the difference in angle is too small. Basically so small, you would be better off not making the cut at all. There is a simple guideline called 30 degree rule, stating that the camera should move at least 30 degrees in angle to justify the cut. Otherwise, the minimal change might result in making your audience very disoriented. This confusing effect even has a name, it's called jump cut. A notable exception are of course the cut-in and cutaway shots, but those are essentially just magnifying or zooming out of what's already there. More on these later. What can also be problematic are sudden jumps in the contents of your scene. And nowhere it's more apparent than in your lighting. Let's say I have a scene in this room. I cut from wide angle to close up and then in the next shot my moonlight is coming from completely the opposite side. It may seem very obvious in this case, but this error happens quite a lot actually and for any number of reasons, from simply forgetting to unify the lighting between shots or very often when you flip your shot horizontally. Don't get me wrong, you can totally get away with a bit of light turning between shots. Filmmakers do this all the time, they vary their light sources, changing the angle of the light hitting the actor to better serve the purposes of the individual shots, but there is a limit usually right around 45 or 60 degrees in change. The topic of line of action and getting across it is one of the most important rules of cinematography. I dedicate a whole section of the course to it, including several exercises and scenes to practice it. The simplest way to demonstrate this rule is with a moving object. You simply cannot have a cut where these cars are riding from the left to right in one shot and then from the right to left in the next. That way it almost feels like it's different cars. What you have to do is choose a number of ways of traversing the line. The simplest one, jump on the line and then cross it. Upholding the direction of movement is just one of the aspects of the so-called 180 degree rule. <laughs> yeah, so many degree rules, but they're all about one thing, ensuring the continuity and making the sequence easier for the audience to read. Another thing that can totally throw off anybody watching your videos is a sudden change of focal point, especially in these sorts of cut-in shots. Let's say I change my camera and now the second shot suddenly shows the hero in this area. Again, when I let the scene play out, it almost feels like the second shot is from another sequence and it's just not pleasing to watch. So if you decide to magnify any detail in your scene, or in an opposite case, jump away to wide shot, always try to keep the focal point roughly in the same area. To help you out, you can always activate these overlays to better judge where to put the focal points. With this rule, we are getting into a more subjective area. Especially when it comes to action sequences, I personally like to avoid cutting in the middle of a prominent move, if you do so, your sequences may turn into a confusing mess, with the action being pretty unclear. Instead, when you position your cut somewhat to where one action ends and another begins, you will make everything flow better and make it more readable. Not all filmmakers uphold this, but it's my personal conviction that action scenes, and generally any scenes with movement, should cut at the beginning or end of a major move. There should be a rhythm to your editing. One that you should try your best to not break too violently without a good reason. For example, in this sequence, we have a series of calm shots, roughly about 70 frames long, and all flows nicely. 
But what if I break this rhythm with a random, super quick shot? Is there a reason for it? I mean, if something very quick happened in the scene, that could be a valid reason. But it's not the case here. All this one did was breaking the rhythm of the cut. Or here, you have a fairly long establishing shot of the car chase. And then you add two quick random shots. Only to return to the slow rhythm right after. If anything, you should at least obey the rule of threes. If you do something in your edit just once, it's random. If you do it twice and never repeat it, it's a mistake. And if you do it three times, you are establishing a new rule. So if we do the random thing three times instead of once or twice, we have made a new rule and established a new rhythm. But take care, the repetition doesn't need to be perfect every time. In fact, it's not advisable, otherwise it becomes too rigid. Editing shot sequences for films is a complex thing, and there are infinite ways and styles to do it. If, however, you want to avoid the most common pitfalls, I suggest you think about these most common mistakes in your future videos. And if you want to go much deeper into topics like line of action, various types of sequence types and cuts between them, definitely check out my latest Master Cinematic Storytelling course, because into it, I poured all my knowledge about CG cinematography. From contrast to colors, from composition to camera movement and sequences, I talk about it all. So give it a shot if you want to practice the fundamentals. Until next time, stay creative my friends, Martin out.